Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome. So yep. lovely to see you. Charlie Midnight, Jan Fairchild, welcome. We're so honoured and privileged to have you on board, Wonderbirds. <laughs> um, tell us all about, we, we, we're really excited. How, do, how long have you two guys known each other? Jan, um, you can answer that. Like, yeah, it's about eight years now. But wow. the, the, the interesting thing is, I grew up in Staten Island, one of the boroughs in New York City, and Charlie grew up in Brooklyn. We probably grew up about three miles from each other. Um, wow. Wow. But, you know, and then we both lived in L.A., but we never crossed paths until about eight years ago. But once we crossed paths, it was, you know, like instant kind of recognition and uh, like brothers and, you know, yeah. just friends. Yeah. And, you know, we just... So what happened to get you together after all these years? What, what happened that you met? A friend introduced us. Um, and we did some writing, and um, then it continued from there. That's wow. really, it's really that simple because we clicked, and uh, really we inspired each other, and really originally started writing music for ourselves. You know, we've been doing this for a long time, and you always have to write and work for other people, and uh, just started writing and recording the music we wanted for ourselves and with other people and it just kept rolling and Fun. yeah it just we had a connection well it yes. always gets it's always funny to me when people say to me when are you going to retire i'm like that word doesn't exist in my vocabulary no you no know, it's just like retire, retire from what exactly and <laughs> keep creating exactly can keep creating and you get the fulfillment from that and the creating is an end in itself, then, you know, there's no reason to stop regardless of what stage you're in. And uh, I mean, I personally never, I, Jan and I have both been very fortunate to, to keep doing this for all these years. And in, in our hearts, uh, it, it never, uh, you know, it never lessens the fire. Yeah. yeah, I think because the thing is, people used to ask my mother how old she was, and she used to say, "Do you want to know how old my body is, or how old my mind is?" Mm. Yeah. So uh, people are people are always so trans, you know, that they're just sort of so into how, especially with women as well, how old you are, the whole thing, and that's just nothing to do with it. It's to do with who you are, isn't it? Absolutely, especially like you said, especially with creative people. I think. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, if you start worrying about um, I'm a certain age and as a result, I shouldn't be doing this or I shouldn't be doing that. Well, that's going to shut you down. And what's the point? Mm -hmm. I, re I don't have any hobbies. So <laughs> this is all I can do to fill up my time. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Jan and I constantly create. We're producing. We're still producing and writing. Um, you know, I don't know if, if you're aware, but I just wrote the... Uh, um lyrics for this new Barbara Streisand song. Um, oh wow. From this movie, uh uh the uh the uh, tattooist of Auschwitz. Yes. And, and uh wrote it with Hans Zimmer and uh Walter Afanasioff and and Kara Tal. So um uh, we're we're both fortunate that uh, people keep asking us uh to work for them and paying us. And what could be better than that? Exactly. <laughs> Well, that's what Wonderful. we feel, all of us. Yeah, yeah. Because we're all we're artists. All the artists you've worked with. I mean, she's she's just such an icon, isn't she? Just wonderful. Barbara well, Streisand. But just let me say that she's obviously she's iconic, but she is a true artist. A true artist through and through. She does not sing a melody or a lyric that she doesn't feel. She's the strongest artist I've ever worked with, and her instincts are impeccable. And she's not that easy to work with because I've written for a few albums of hers, and um, you know I have to sometimes do some rewriting to so she could feel good about what she's singing. So wow. you know, there's 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 a reason why she's lasted so long and her popularity has never waned. Correct. Yeah, I think perfectionists, perfectionists, you see, are always deemed difficult to work with, aren't they? 
Well, she's not difficult because you respect her. Okay, yeah. I, I don't look, you know, Jan and I have been in the position to have to do things for other people. So we have to be, we have to respect their opinions mm -hmm. uh, because the end result they have to be happy with. And, and also so, they're the one on show, aren't they, I suppose? Yeah, and so I think, you know, we're used to it. We're, you know, look, I always think everything I write is great. So uh, if, somebody want, if somebody wants to change, uh, okay, we might have a few words back and forth. But in the end, we have to come to a compromise. Um, I'm not going to settle, as, jazz, as Jan won't, for anything less than what we think is great. But there has to be a coming to terms. So we're, we're, we're used to it. So, uh, but Barbara is not difficult. Not, not, not with me anyway. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's also the beauty of us with the with the uh, Skin Tight Review Project. It's just, it's me and Charlie. You know, it's like our music. We yeah. don't have to answer to anybody. We don't have to concern ourselves with if somebody's going to like it or not. If they're going to, you know, what appreciate what we're doing because we're always on the same page and we push each other and. We just love the music that we do, you know, and we're always been, we've always been, if we're the only ones that love it, that's fine. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, it's just really, you know, and so we're, we feel really fortunate again that we've had the opportunity to do it and that John came along, you know, Charlie knew John and John heard the music and he was just like, I love this music and I want to put it out. And we were Absolutely. like, great. Yeah. <laughs> this was great. Stunning. And you've both had incredible careers too. Um I, yeah. I I I know. And I think as you said about Barbara Streisand being a true artist, you two, that's what you are, true artists. Well, we and, appreciate that. Yeah. You know, and, and it's very they're very few and far between nowadays. Well, I think that for, for us it was like Jan just said, we were doing this for ourselves. So this album, we did not worry about whether something was commercial or not commercial. Um, I would come up with an idea, Jan would come up with an idea, and it it flowed very smoothly, you know. And and the end result each time was that we were excited about what we did, you yeah. know. We were happy with it, you know. And now, you know, with John from Right Records the fact that he liked it because I had, uh, there was another project I knew him from, uh, which was this, um, uh, this, there was this film uh, Burlesque with Cher. So I wrote the song, Welcome to Burlesque, and that's going to be a stage play. So oh, John, wow. John, John was doing work for them, right? So he said to me, I have a label. I said, okay, I'll send you the music. And he loved it. And so Jan and I looked at each other and go, okay, now we have a place to put our music with somebody that loves it. So it was really fortuitous. Wonderful. And he's such a great guy. He used to manage me, actually. Really? And wow. I've known him for a long time. He's, he's fantastic. And again, he, you know, he's very ethical. He looks after people in the right way. And he yeah. won't get involved with anyone unless he thinks it's really great, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, he's been wonderful. I, I, think, <clears throat> I think you should hear Natalie play the piano. Oh, no, you shouldn't. Natalie. <laughs> no, no, no. Natalie no, makes no, the should. funniest songs up you have ever heard in your life. <laughs> and, usually on the spot and usually very late at night. Let's not go there. No, no, I'm not. Sometimes that's the best time. Yeah, really. Sometimes that's the best time. It is, yeah. absolutely. Well, Natalie and I are going to get together because I'm going to teach Natalie to sing and she's <laughs> Teach me to play the piano. Okay, so you can <laughs> be a, a duo. Yeah. Well, luckily today, you don't know how have to know how to sing. <laughs> True. <laughs> You're so right, Charlie. You're so all right. have to play the piano. <laughs> That's I mean, exactly. Too. Yeah. There's a oh. lot of technology that 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 can help you out. Is what I'm saying. There's still a lot of great singers, but. You know, it's a different it's a different time. You know, in terms of who can actually record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jan, Jan, what what is your what's the most exciting thing apart from this that you've ever done, or the most exciting project or whatever? Um, besides this, 
I would say, well, Charlie and I are working on another project where we're bringing together some classic singers to sing on. Um, and uh, that's pretty exciting. we got Richard Marks, who is a big, you know, pop singer back in the 90s. Um, and we have other people we're lining up too. So that's that was really, that's actually a currently exciting thing. Um, probably the other one, I would say, I did a couple albums with Mos Def, you know, the rapper. And um, talking about being an artist, I mean, he really is a true artist. He would never do anything to compromise his values, his musical integrity. The labels were always trying to get him to do stuff, quote unquote, more commercial. And he would be like, that's not who I am. You know, um, this is who I am and this is how I go about it. And um, I was very fortunate because I spent a lot of, we did two albums together. And um, that was pretty high on the list. And then I would say I mixed an Al Jarreau record. And I spent a lot of time with Al working on that record. And um, that was, again, pretty exciting. I mean, yeah. the, the list can go on and on, though. I mean, <laughs> we, Charlie and I both, I mean, we've talked about this so many times. We've worked with so many great artists, you know, between us. Um, we feel just very fortunate that we've been able to do that and we continue to do it. Like Charlie said, people keep coming to us. So we must be doing something right. <laughs> You certainly are. The one thing I, and, and again, no, this ahead. album, like I said, is really a culmination of kind of our life's work, you know, like how what we've developed, our skills, our talent, and to be able to just put the music out there that we really love. I mean, we we love this record. We listen to the record all the time. I mean, to be able to make music that you love and listen to it and still love it is Pretty amazing, yeah. And, oh, and we, really and good we have other that. singers on this on this album. Wonderful singers, uh, Jessica Childress and uh, Marco Slate and uh, and and Buck Johnson, who's also the uh, keyboard player for um, for Aerosmith and the Hollywood Vampires, uh, and all friends that came in and joined us, and to create this spirit of sort of a traveling show. Uh, as uh, as a result, the name of our album is the Ever Loving Traveling Show, and uh, we wanted to create that spirit, sort of like an old school um, Mad Dogs and Englishmen, uh, where you know everybody had their part, and and we had all these friends come in and play, and it wasn't really calculated. We wrote the songs, and if it wasn't, if we didn't think it was right for me to sing. We called up somebody and said, hey, you know, you want to join us? And lucky for us, they all wanted to join us. You know, I think because everybody had an opportunity to not be so concerned with, uh, I have to create the next thing and who's going to play it and is it going to get on Spotify? But to do something for the joy of it, you know, and then, you know, put it out there, see what happens, you know. Good. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. So when are you coming to the UK, guys? <laughs> well, as soon as John, as soon as John can get us some, uh, some, some gigs where we can afford to come over with a band, right? You know, that, that and we'll be, up. we'll be the ancient groupies that hang around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> well, That's look, you know, if anybody wants to fly us yeah. over and you know, minimally business class, you know, put us up in a nice hotel, we're good, no problem. You know, wow. So. <laughs> we bear that in mind, seriously. Okay, well, Jan, Jan, you up for it? Of course. Yeah. Have you been to the UK before? I've oh. been to London about 10 times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, I it's went a while, to, but I've been there a lot. Yeah, I went to London uh, when I was 19 with a rock and roll band. Uh, one of one of uh, one of the members was British. And um, we hung out there, went to a lot of clubs, uh, uh, lived in a place called Golders Green. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> yes, that's lovely. With a, right, with a bunch of girls upstairs, and we were living downstairs, and um, we never really did much. 
except go to the clubs. And I hung out on Carnaby Street for a while and uh, then came back. But uh, it was it was great at 19 years old to be able to do that. But I've been back like John, uh, like Jan, like Jan uh, you know, quite a few times. You know? I think London was a cooler place then. I, places like Carnaby Street, they're just not the same anymore, are they, girls? No. Just not really. I remember, I remember going down Carnaby Street and having a bell round my neck when I was about 12 and stripy trousers. But this bell, we all used to have bloody bells. Why did we have bells round our necks, for God's sake? It, it was so weird. I mean, I, I was brought up in the music business. My parents uh, managed lots of bands uh, sort of in the 60s and 70s. And it was... Uh, it was, I mean, for a child to be brought up in, in that world was just incredible because I just knew everyone. And, you know, I used to go back to school and, and talk about the sort of who was at my house at the weekend. People were like stunned. Um, yeah, and I think, and D, yeah, and D had the same, didn't you, with your yeah. growing? Yeah, my parents um, had, had a lot of, you know, they were out there a lot because of all their productions. I don't know if you've heard of, Thunderbirds. Yes, but, yeah, both. We both yeah. know about it. Yeah, yeah, um, and um, yeah. So it, similarly, you know, big sort of stars would come round for tea, like um, you know Bob Mitchum or Shirley Bassey, or you know what I mean. <laughs> Nobody would believe me at school, really. I remember going back to school once, saying that my hair cost me two pounds to have it done. No one believed me. And that just shows you how long ago that was. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we, we could go into those stories about what things cost, how long ago that was. And it's sort of mind boggling, really. It is, isn't it? If yeah. only we had known, we would have bought loads and loads of properties all over the world for nothing. <laughs> we, only knew, we only knew. We have a lot more stories. As a matter yeah. of fact, I'm just going to plug my al our album again. You know, an album by the Skin Tight Review. It's called the Ever Love and Traveling Show, and that will be the first single. Everybody got to pay the price, maybe just once, maybe twice. Love or money, passion or pride, just get your ticket and step inside. Welcome to the Ever Love and Traveling Show. We're gonna take you. Where you want to go Some like the high life And some like the low Welcome to the ever-loving Travel show And we share it, we're sharing it, of course, on our social medias. So um, I think that will do really well. And I just can't wait. That's wonderful. I have seen the share burlesque song. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so Very. have I. Oh, it's fabulous. Thank you. Fabulous. Thanks. Really fabulous. Uh, if we had Charlie's very... written a few, Charlie's written a few decent songs and produced a few decent songs in his time. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> well, just a few. <laughs> I, I've been really fortunate uh, uh, to work with like James Brown, Joni Mitchell, Joe Cocker, oh. Billy Joel. I mean, it just goes on and on. I've been. I don't know. I lucked out, but it took me a long time to get there. Jan was playing in. Uh, Jan, your father was a, a, a successful musician. Yeah, my my dad actually. I don't know if you remember. There was a band called um, Hot Butter. They had a big hit called Popcorn back in the early seventies. Oh yeah, and that that yeah. was my dad's. My dad was in that band. Um, so I mean, he was a musician. So I mean. At, like when I was seven years old, he gave me an accordion and said, okay, I'm going to teach you how to play. And uh -huh. that's how it all started. But he was, he really, you know, was, he had the success as a musician and as a producer. So I saw that early on and I just knew that's all I ever wanted to do. Mm -hmm. and, then, and after they did their first album for the second album, they actually asked me to join the band. So I was 20 <laughs> years old and they're having me write their next single. You know, and then I find out decades later that, um, oh, what's his name? Radcliffe over at BBC. Uh, Mark, Mark Radcliffe at BBC used to play my song on his show, like his background music. 
And it just blew my mind. I had no idea that that was happening, you know, and for like a decade he was using the song. Wow. That's again the beauty of musical. You never know how your music is going to impact people and how it's going to be used. And yeah. How people's lives. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. I think that if you keep on creating and uh, and it affects people mm -hmm. that at some point some of these things you create get out there. I mean, you have to have that faith. You know, we've been able to earn a living at this for quite a while. I mean, Jan, Jan when he was 20 years old, he was out. I mean, I had to wait like a decade. I got a record deal after slugging it out for 10 years in the clubs in New York, thinking I'll never get a record deal and have to having to make my peace with that. Okay, and, and working jobs while I did that. But like Jan, I thought this is the only thing that I wanted to do. Although I did look in the newspaper once in a while for other jobs and think, wow, should I go back to school? And then I remembered, no, I don't want to go back to school. And so, you know, it's it's uh, you just you just keep on doing it. I I slugged it out for a long time. Do, but... you, do you guys have kids? Are they in the industry? No, I don't have kids. Charlie has a daughter. I have two daughters. Two daughters. I have one who is uh, who is produces podcasts and uh, commercials. Um, uh -huh. She does that. She graduated uh, from NYU Film School, but um, I'm very happy she didn't go into the film business because if we think the music business is <laughs> difficult and ruthless, the film business is Ooh. worse. It's it is worse, and it's not great for women. Okay. No. Um, it's getting better, but it's not great. Um, no. And I have an older daughter from uh, a marriage when I was very, very young. And she actually is uh, lives near Aspen, and she's a DJ. She's, wow. on, she's on the local radio, and she's a DJ. She knows much more about music than I do. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, Wonderful. And, and, and when she knows I'm going to listen, she plays all the old soul music. You know, she plays off all the new stuff and she does all the old soul music so her father can actually enjoy her show. It's really wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Do you know what, guys? We could just go on talking to you forever. Sadly, we've, we've actually got to wrap up now, but do you know what? Will you come back again and talk to us? Because you are, you know, fantastically wonderful and talented and interesting. Yeah. I would also like to plug, if you want to know more about my particular history, Indeed. I have written a book called uh, Deserves Got Nothing to Do With It, which is my philosophy. Okay, uh, Everybody deserves as much or as little as anybody else, and, uh, and, and it deserves got nothing to do with it, talking crap with Charlie Midnight. So, <laughs> And, and and you can get it you can get it on Amazon. But um, Jan and I are really we're just so happy that that John is uh, loves our record and is putting it out. And we're just uh, hoping that other people could enjoy it as much as we do. We Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll, we're going to we're going to try and get you to the UK so you don't have to get up that time. Exactly. That okay. that's what we're going to do. Okay. Well, well, thank Jan, you. Thank you for having us. Look, thank, thank you for coming us, on. Jan. It's good seeing Bye, you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.